Merry Christmas. We decided to interrupt our <laughs> normal programming for a little bit of a Christmas special. Yeah, Christmas special Q&A slash real-time update. If you didn't see, we actually posted a question up on our Patreon, on Instagram, and on Facebook asking you guys what you wanted to know about us, and we got a ton of responses, tons of questions. Thank you to everybody that asked a question. Uh, we're gonna do our best to answer all of them. We're also going to update you oh, yeah. a little bit of real time, because obviously yep. it's cold. Yeah, if you saw last week's video, we were like <laughs> and wearing <snowy>. nothing. <laughs> Stay tuned for that because we're going to show you where we're at today and kind of everything. Yeah. Shall we start? <laughs> Don't knock it over! <laughs> Alright, question number one. What do you expect to be the most challenging aspect of cir circumnavigating the globe? That's tough. These are going to be hard. Oh man. <laughs> Starting um, off strong, Brett. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to say just picking the, the right route. All the paperwork and the legalities and pet passports and all that sort of stuff. So that's going to be hard. But I think just picking the route and kind of where do we want to go? Because we want to see a lot of places. We want to go to a lot of places. We want to, and, and we've talked about different plans of how long we're going to stay in different places. And we just don't know. Because we're going to have to play it by ear. Do we want to stay here for a week? Do we want to stay here for a day? And so I think that's going to be challenging is just how long do we stay in each place and then where do we go from there? Do we plan on taking our dogs around the world with us? Yes, you better believe it. <laughs> We're very much of the opinion that when you adopt a dog, it's a life commitment and there are dogs, so <laughs> they're adaptable and they like the boat, so it'll be, it'll be a good time. We're actually Bingo's fourth family and he doesn't need to have five. Or a penny second. <laughs> what sports were you into growing up and what sports are you excited for while sailing? Get ready for this, it's a long list. <laughs> <laughs> I played pretty much every sport. Soccer, softball, volleyball. I did competitive gymnastics for quite a while, which if you ask any of my older siblings, they'll totally blame that for why I'm shorter than the rest of the family. I also was a synchronized swimmer. That one is my favorite sport that I did. Like, and also definitely the hardest sport I've ever done. Right after high school, I got really into rock climbing and I did competitive rock climbing, but just on the regional level, like local, mildly competitive, nothing crazy. But yeah, I really enjoy rock climbing. Okay, and then in Hawaii, I got into surfing and free diving and water sports like that. So, I think that's all of them. I'm probably missing a few. I'd have to ask my mom. I did a lot of different things. Brett, what about you? Well, so what are you What are you most excited for? Oh, for sailing? Yeah. Ooh, so I've always really wanted to get into um, kiteboarding. I don't know if that's something I can do anymore because of my joints, but I definitely am excited to free dive and just be under the water. I love water. I think all of my favorite sports are the water related ones. For sure. Especially rock climbing. Especially rock climbing. I'm multi-dimensional. <laughs> Your turn. Oh, I'm answering this one too? Yeah. Okay. I didn't play a whole lot of ball sports. I guess like in high school and stuff, I played volleyball. I wrestled and then I ran track. I ran um, hurdles and I pole vaulted. Yeah, you were a good pole vaulter. I, I, was, I was okay. I was decent. I'm not very tall. And so I wasn't very good. I wasn't great at pole vaulting or hurdles because once you get to high school, like they are taller <laughs> and I didn't get taller. So I was great in middle school <laughs> and then high school, everything got taller except for me. And so it didn't really happen. But I think after that, yeah, rock climbing, got into rock climbing as well. That's actually like really the foundation of our relationship was a lot of rock climbing. That was like our very first date that we really went on. And then I love spearfishing uh, and free diving, but spearfishing more than free diving. I'm not super into just, you know, how deep can you go or how long can you stay down. For me, it's, I, I, I like the hunt of spearfishing. It's so much fun. So that is definitely what I'm looking forward to most of <laughs> being, being in the water and being on a boat is getting back into spearfishing because I loved it when we were in Hawaii and could go all the time. Um, but beyond that, uh, I mean, I've never done kiteboarding. I think it sounds like a riot, so I'm in. Let's try it. Oh, I remembered one. I want to learn how to do the silks. Oh. Like, you know what, the, the... Yeah, yeah. Like yoga <laughs> type thing. Was that the visual? Yeah. 
I want to learn that. Hey, that's one we didn't talk about is we've what? done acro yoga. Oh yeah, yoga, acro yoga. But like what millennial white person hasn't done that? Well, yeah, I mean, it's kind of like you count? have to. Yeah. yeah. Especially yeah. if you live in a van. Ah. Come on. Check in. Good girl, good boy. How did we meet? I think we have a random like toddler to thank for that. <laughs> we met at church and some kid pulled the fire alarm. And so we met out on in the parking lot waiting for the fire department to show up and tell us that there wasn't a fire. <laughs> I met her and her friend. Me and my friend walked up, met her and her friend and invited them to come rock climbing with us that next Friday. And her friend didn't come, but Jade came and that was it. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we met. Oh my gosh, we've got dogs hunting geese. One second. Come back! Good, thank you. That water's cold. Good girl. Come on! Come on, come on, come on! Good girl, good boy. There are these like older guys and they actually wanted to do something fun <laughs> and exciting. It wasn't like, hey, do you want to go see a movie? It was like rock climbing. I'm like, I'm in. <laughs> These are my people, and now he's my person, so it worked out. It did work out. All right, Jade, how's the snow? It's fun for a second. <laughs> We're definitely a tropical family, though, but it's a good experience, I think. Yeah. The dogs seem to like it way more than I expected. Yeah, they're loving it. What do you think, Penny? You like it? <laughs> Did she just like snort at you? Yeah. He makes it so easy. <laughs> Try the elevation. Four wheel drive. <laughs> to the store we need to get some supplies because we are going to make gingerbread houses today because it's Christmas and it's Christmas <laughs> <laughs> and we are being festive <laughs> also that <laughs> First, we need to go drop the dogs off at home because we need to run to the store and we don't want to leave them in the car that long. Too cold. Too cold. What's your degree? I have a degree in aeronautical management technology, professional flight. <laughs> What's your degree? I have a bachelor's of fine arts in painting. Do you think this will fit in the other? Yes. What plane do you fly? I fly the Dash 8. What's your job? Vlogger slash pilot. <laughs> What's your job? I'm a photographer. Is that it? And a vlogger. Oh. And a painter. <laughs> yes! I thought they were all out. When are we going to launch? We are going to launch two weeks ago. <laughs> Here we are. We are in the water. We're all reassembled and we're just waiting on the mast. Look at our boat, guys. We have a boat. This is our house. We're super, super, super excited. So this is our real-time update for you guys. Here we are. We're pretty much all done. Well, we're all done. We've got everything reassembled and we're just waiting for our masks to be set. Cute dog drinking water loudly. <laughs> and then also, I took apart the counters. We're replacing the fiddles. So we're in the middle of this project. It looks a little wanky right now. Wanky? Wanky? <laughs> <laughs> janky? Janky? That's wonky and janky. Uh, but other than that, how's it going? Welcome home. Yeah. So obviously the next question that needs to be answered is why the heck 
do we have such a huge backlog? The reason why we are currently sitting in the water and you think, or at least the last video you saw, was us getting the keel blast is because we were working so much, so hard, so fast that we physically didn't have time to film, edit, post, and work on the boat and sleep and eat. Like some, something, <laughs> something had to give. And so we chose to not post, which meant not edit. And so we basically just built up multiple portable hard drives worth of footage <laughs> for portable hard drives just of just footage that we haven't edited. Right. So we, what a lot of people don't understand when you're on the other end of the screen from YouTubers, content creators, video editors, is how much time it takes to create a video, especially when you're new and we're new. If you've been watching all of our videos up to this point, you have seen how freaking hard, <laughs> how hard we worked on this boat. We were putting in 40, 60, what do you say? 60 to 80 at least. 60 to 80 hours. Hours a week, just manual labor fixing this thing. And that's because we didn't have work <laughs> because of COVID. We both did, did, weren't working. We had nothing else to do with our time. And from Brett's company, we had kind of a vague, you're going to go back to work in the fall. So we were trying to get it done. We were just yeah. trying to get it finished before Brett had to go back to work, before the weather changed, before we got stuck here for the winter kind of. That was, that was the plan. So yeah, we had, we had a kind of finite amount of time. Right. And, and a lot of work. <laughs> well, well, we could choose what to do with that, right? We right. could either work on the boat, edit, post, and, and kind of extend everything, or we could try and just bust out as much work as possible. Right. Which is what we and did. And move on. Right. Yeah. The weather was good. It was the perfect opportunity because we were both going to be around. And we knew that once Brett was traveling, a lot of these projects are two-person jobs. So when Brett was gone, I could just work all day on the editing, and it just worked out really well for us. So that's what we ended up doing. And to give it some context, for how long it takes to edit a video, the first few videos that we published, I spent 60 to 80 hours editing. And we've gotten a lot faster. The more we edit, the better we get at it. But still, right now, current time, December 2020, it still takes me 20 to 40 hours to edit the videos. And now Brett has his computer and he's helping too, so that makes it go better. So hopefully we'll be able to push out videos yeah. in with less production time. But that's, that's why, because in an 80-hour work week on the boat, there wasn't another 80 hours to put into editing a video. <laughs> As a, I hope you guys can understand. So that's where the backlog is so far. And then in the future, I think that we will continue to have a backlog. We don't ever plan to not, for a lot of reasons. For one, it's stressful to not know if you're going to have enough content to make videos to post. <laughs> it's so intermingled. But now that YouTube has replaced my need to do photography for an income, it's important that I am making sure that these videos are coming out consistently so that the income is consistent. And then the other reason is just because of the nature of Brett's job. Obviously with my job, I travel for a living. That's what I do, I'm a pilot. Yeah. And so I'm not always here. And so it works that when I'm away flying, Jade can work on the videos. Mm -hmm. And if I'm ever away and I have downtime, then I can help videos as well. I can, if I'm ever away, videos. yeah, if, I, if I'm ever away <laughs> and I have downtime, then because I have my laptop now, I can now help on the videos. And we've actually figured out how to do that. We've kind of worked out a system so we can do that. And it works really well. It does. It's been going really so. well. And that also means on the flip side of that, that when Brett's home, we can just adventure and film, yeah, just film. and yeah. eventually sail and work on the boat projects, whatever it is. When he's home, we're not locked to a computer. We're just being with each other. And then when he's gone, we both work. And then, so that's kind of the plan moving forward is for the foreseeable future, at least, is that we will continue that cycle of... While I'm traveling, we edit and we, we edit videos, and then while I'm home, we film, we film. <laughs> which is fantastic for us and for you, because all you see is us working on the boat. And eventually adventuring and sailing and yeah. fishing and all those kinds of things. And obviously we hope to eventually be able to be making enough YouTubing that I can quit my job or at least lessen what I'm doing so that we can do yeah. this more full-time. That's definitely my goal. Like, oh, I just, absolutely. I just want bread around all the time. <laughs> I just hate... I hate that you go to work. <laughs> uh, uh, that is actually a question that we did get, was how okay. long until you're able to just do YouTube full-time? So the answer is me now, I'm doing YouTube full-time. Brett, maybe... It's, I don't hard, know. it's hard to say a timeline because everything's yeah. still so wish So what happened is we had a big lump of savings before COVID. And then we bought the boat, we started the project, and then we didn't work. 
for all those months that we were working on the boat. And then we so, kept not working. So, right, because of the backlog, right, yeah, we're making money now, but that was, that's in the past. <laughs> <laughs> right. So for all those months, we were just living on our savings account, which means our savings account is no longer full of money with which right. we can cruise on. So that needs to be replenished before yeah, we so, go Yeah, so before we can even feel comfortable cruising full-time without my income as well, we need to build up that savings. So for the sake of future, we'll keep doing both YouTubing and I'll keep flying until we have that kind of safety bubble. Right. And then, then we'll do it. So timeline? Who Couldn't knows? tell you. <laughs> yeah, it, it's really going to depend on how well YouTube does, really. Yeah. I think. Just so share our videos. Yeah. Right. Right now <laughs> it's looking my good. Come true. Right now it's looking good that if we're we are growing and yeah. it's amazing. But this is so new <laughs> and yeah. no, it's not. Something it doesn't to feel the, real. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> it's not something to quit the day job for yet. Not at least not both of us. No. Yeah. But it's exciting because this is what we wanted. Awesome. Like this is what we yeah. wanted to do for so long, and now we're doing it. Yep. And it's going. <laughs> well it is it's going really well Blowing better all better yeah, yeah better than either of us could have ever hoped or dreamed or yeah, expected or anything it. so like, so is, thank you uh yeah, okay. and we're gonna start building gingerbread houses now true gingerbread houses okay let's do it <laughs> as part of like my autoimmune treatment plan. So we bought gluten-free flour for the first time and these gingerbread houses will probably taste terrible, but maybe they'll be good. Maybe. With enough, we have, we have a lot of candy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll find out. Okay, I'm gonna go put my hair up and change my shirt. dinner burned. We just got an instant pot and I don't know how to work this darn contraption. And I did something wrong. I'll figure it out. I think it might have been the lemons that I put on the potatoes. I think that burned. The juice? Yeah. Is that a thing guys? Just do any of you guys have instant pots? Can you help me out? <laughs> This one we got asked a lot. What are our top... <laughs> I'm trying to get a tablespoon of ginger, no more, no less. Give Thank me a break. Thank you for being precise. <laughs> okay. Bucket list sailing destination. Number one sailing destination. What sailing destination do you look forward to the most? We've had every variation of that question. Yeah. Um, I don't have one, like, dying destination. I really want to see the Great Barrier Reef. I want to dive it. So that one is definitely up there for me. Um, most of the Bahamas <laughs> is up there. Um, again, no like specific place, just kind of, I really want pretty reefs with lots of fish. That's healthy is what I want, like pretty reefs. I've narrowed it down. Yeah, exactly. So that's what I want. So if you have a place that you should recommend, you should recommend it. <laughs> okay, how about you? Tonga. Tonga is my number one. I really want to see the humpback whales, and you can see them very well there. But mostly, I just love the culture. We had some Tongan neighbors when we lived in Hawaii. A lot of Tongan neighbors. We were in like a Tongan area, and they're just good people. And I think as, there's a lot of places I want to see, but Tonga is some place I want to go and I want to stay a while. Our fish is just falling apart. It's definitely done. In the best way. Still much to be learned about Instapot. The ways of cooking. the pot. I'm sure somebody is a professional. We are not. I think I got negative points on presentation, ah. but flavor. It tastes delicious. Yeah. Are we planning to have kids? Yes. Next question. <laughs> ah. Yes, we are planning to have kids. No, we don't have a timeline, and no, she's not pregnant. Nope. <laughs> We're also not currently trying. Um, kids. Yeah, eventually I think we'll reproduce. Ah! 
Yeah, I don't know if there's really anything more to say to that. Yeah, this will have kids. No, it's not in the near future. But what the next question that relates to that one is, why did you get such a big boat? Are you planning to raise a family on it? Yes, that is why. That's the big reason why we got this big boat, because obviously we do not need this big of a boat for us or yeah. for us and the dogs even. This is like, a little excessive, let's be honest. Yeah, and we know that. But we are planning to have a family one day and we wanted a boat that we could grow into. Mm -hmm. And this is it. This boat is big enough and has, is open enough and has the amenities that we need, you know, some upgrades over time, that this this we can see ourselves having our family in this boat. Right. Which is why we went through all the work, all the everything to make this boat a boat that we could have for, for a forever. long time. Yeah. yeah, and that plays into a bigger theme, I think, in our life of this whole decision is that we, for so long, our goal has been to do the boat life, to travel, to sail. We just love it. And so up until now, everything in our life has just been so transient. It's been like, okay, we're leaving here till now. We're working, we live in a bus. We're working we this job till now. Yeah. We're, we're being this frugal, reading this much ramen for now, right? Mm -hmm. And and so we've just never had any permanency. Is that a word? Yeah. Anyway, so we could have gotten a starter boat, like a smaller boat just for us, and then when we decided to have kids, got a bigger boat. But we just wanted to have our home and to be able to just live here and know that it's ours and, like, fully invest emotionally. Yeah. And this is that for us. Yeah, we've had too many times where it's we didn't want to fully invest into that life because we knew that in X amount of weeks, days, months, yeah. even years, we'd be moving. We lived, it was hard. You guys, we lived in a condo, well, a townhouse for a while, and we literally did not buy a couch. Literally, for six months. Yeah, because we didn't expect to be there. Because we're like, no, we're going to leave, or, yeah. you know, it's just a step on the journey to get to the boat. Yes, we'll have kids. Yes. yes, that's part of why we bought the big boat and why we put so much effort into it. We could have band-aided it and probably just sailed, whatever, but... This is going to be our home and for our family, for our kids, forever, for well, at least for a long time at least. Yeah. And so, it needs to be up to the task, and we believe it is now. And when we lived in the bus, the bus was great for us. It was 115 square feet. It was about the size of the Sprinter van. Yeah, it's 20, 24 feet nose to tail. It was a short bus, so it was almost exactly the same dimensions, height, and everything as a sprinter van. And it was fine for us, but the thing I hated about it most is that we're pretty social and we like having people over. And we were living in Hawaii, it was this awesome place, but we couldn't be like, hey, friends and family, come and stay with us. And that sucked. No. It was like, well, you can pitch it. They couldn't even come hang out. Like, we, we, never, we couldn't have people over for dinner. Ever. Yeah. So being able to have hosts, mm -hmm. I think, was another big part to having to live with both. Because we have big families, and we want to be able to share the adventure with that too. Okay, question for you. <clears throat> Will we ever look for crew? It's like crew members on the boat. Okay. Um. Or, I assume this question. Mm -hmm. Or do we crew on someone else's boat? I assume they're wondering if we will crew, like have crew on. Yeah. Probably not. Just because you might not believe it based on the fact that we have a YouTube channel about our whole life. Brett and I are actually fairly private people, and we really, we really like being alone to ourselves. That's kind of a huge part of the appeal of sailing is just being. What did Uma say in their Facebook post the other day? Quoting Uma twice in a row. Oh, that you they just enjoy being together. Yeah, it was like we. Our dream is to be alone together. That that's us too. We just want to be alone together. So having a crew member, I think, would end up here. That being said, I think when we have children. I would consider bringing on like an au pair, mm -hmm. but only one that could teach me Spanish <laughs> <laughs> because I really want to learn a language. So if we were to bring on a crew member, I think it would be somebody to help with the kids while we're working and also help us learn a skill like Spanish. Yeah. Learning Spanish is really high on my list of goals. Yeah. So I don't, if, if that question was, you know, are we going to invite people onto our boat, are we like, going like to, like Delos, like Delos, Delos I think we have, we have no intentions of ever doing that, that's just not really something that I think we'll ever do, if we'll we're, do, we'll do patron meetups, like, yeah, I was say, exactly, I was say, if we're at Anchorage or something, if people want to come and hang out and say, of course, we're going to hang out with people, but as far as, you know, come sail on our boat with us, Here's your cabin, yeah, right. nah, 
I just not really so interested. Okay, my little sister messaged and asked, "Who is your fave sibling?" Um, hi, Carlin. What? That's your brother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> That's my oldest sister's husband. I mean, if I had to pick. So, how long have we been together? We have we just celebrated our fourth wedding anniversary on November tenth. Right? Yeah. <laughs> she always wants it to be the 11th. It's not. Every year, I think. Every it's year. The 11th. Go for four. Luckily, she made the wedding. <laughs> Why are you holding this? Don't know. I'm helping. Perfect. Oh my gosh. Are you warming up? Look at this. That is dirty. Oh, I haven't washed that yet. Yeah. What are things we enjoy outside of sailing? Hiking. I love hiking and trail. Oh, wait, no, this is the wrong pole! I did a bad thing. I mean, they're all getting mixed together here, too. This is true. But <laughs> <laughs> I love trail running. That's one of my favorite. I should measure that. Yeah. <laughs> Can't, we can't talk and cook. Okay. Activities. Trail, Trail running, running. Hiking. Rock, rock climbing. climbing. Mountain things. Mountain things. Yeah, if we we're doing things not... I mean, I guess, yeah, spearfishing, swimming. That was not two cups. It was like one and a half. Exactly. And then we'll use some of the butter. <laughs> this is the vegan butter. Where is it? Butter. This isn't soft. It's not the butter. Yeah, I got the block kind. I always do this. It's one of these weeks you'll learn. Just like this. It's warm up. Is it? Looks like two sticks to me. Yeah. So we need half of this. Heat it up. Here. I think hiking is probably the biggest thing that we do outside of sailing. We hike a lot. That's why Hawaii was such a perfect place for us, because there was mountains and ocean, and you could have both on the same day, and that was When we awesome. did. <laughs> Often. Often. <laughs> and a hike, go for a swim, cool off, clean off. Yeah. Okay, next question. Is that it? That's all you like to do? You don't like to paint? You don't like to crochet? We were talking about you. Oh, it was, this is about me? Well, it's about me. Yeah, what do I like to do? I don't know, that's why I was asking you. I'm one of those people who likes doing everything. Like, I enjoy pretty much anything I do, I find a way to enjoy it. Or I just really enjoy it. You know? I do all kinds of things. I do all the homey things, like sewing, crafting, crochet, macrame, embroidery. Woo! Sewing. I like to paint. I like creating things. Um, I mean, as far as like passions go, I love to sculpt. And I think long term, I know I got a degree in painting, but I think long term I'll end up being mostly a sculptor and a painter. I'll just be a studio artist painting and sculpting. But that's like career stuff, that's not like hobby stuff. But you enjoy doing it. True. Which is good. It's like me, I like flying. But that's also my job. Awesome. Which is good. That means we picked good careers. Yeah. This is, we've had a lot of generic questions. This one's pretty specific. Jade, have you ever thought of sailing to Sweden or Norway? Ooh, yes. I definitely want to, I definitely, am I Norway? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I definitely want to sail in Norway, like, just explore all the crinkly edges. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. In all seriousness, yes, I definitely want to sail there. It's just beautiful. And back to our last question, we really like hiking. I think that would just be a dream round for us. How do we learn to sail and how do we learn about sailboats? That was all in Hawaii from my dad mostly. Because my dad used to, I mean, many decades ago. <laughs> also lives in Hawaii, by the way. Also lives in Hawaii. My dad used to race sailboats, not in Hawaii when he was younger. And so we had a friend in Hawaii that had a little boat, a little like 14 foot something. It's like a little thingy. 
It wasn't a thing. It was, it was a little, like, racing boat. It was a little thing. It was a, it was a little J-boat. It was oh, yeah, yeah. It was a little, yeah, it was a little yeah. J-boat. Um, and so we took that out one day, and after, like, one, like, out back from the beach We're like, with my oh. dad. <laughs> no, but with my dad. My dad hops off and says, okay, you're good. And tosses me and Jade out there. We had no <laughs> I idea. Was freaking out. She was freaking out. We were like capsized. Okay, well, okay. Like... Imagine you're there. Imagine the one person who knows how to sail goes out and shows Brett how to sail for like 20 minutes. Not even. 10 like, minutes? Yeah. And then comes back in and then I'm stuck in the boat with Brett and he's supposed to be the one teaching me now how to sail. And it was, I was like, the, no. I mean, I mean, it went. It was really And fun. it was fine. And we had a blast. And the next day we bought a boat. What? <laughs> <laughs> True story. And that's how we bought our first solo. Yeah. And then once we got our boat, his dad took us out and gave us more lessons. Some more, yeah, <laughs> some more. Yeah, because it had more lines and winches. And it was an actual It was, it was an actually a, a sailboat, yeah. yeah. Uh, it was a good time. Yeah, it was totally just like, good luck. <laughs> it was great. It was perfect, though. Yeah. I mean, that's really kind of our style anyway. It was just kind of feet Figure first. It out. Yeah. yeah. Both feet in, sink or swim. And it worked. Okay, we need sugar in this. Sugar. Sugar. That's powdered. Oh. Okay, this next question is from one of our patrons, but it's actually... I don't know the question, what you're laughing about. It's your mom, you're so loud in the background. <laughs> That's so hard to edit out. Fine. <laughs> you're over here clapping. What's the question, Jay? <laughs> <laughs> the next question is from one of our patrons, but it's actually kind of... From everybody, this is our most asked question, which is, would you mind sharing your final bid amount? What's your best guess for the total budget, not counting your time? Okay. Like I said, this is our most asked question, and as you guys know, we haven't answered it yet. And that's because, I know some of you guys don't realize this, <laughs> but Brett and I are real people. <laughs> We're a real family. Surprise! <laughs> and we have never been super open about our finances. Like, can you imagine going to a family dinner or, like, having a friend and being like, hey, how much did you spend on your house? I don't know. It's just... Some people do that. Really? Yeah. That's just not how we do. No. And it makes us very uncomfortable. And so the idea of sharing our finances with the broader internet just to appease curiosity is not something we're interested in doing. Yeah, that's true. That being said, we do understand that it's kind of seeing the money breakdown of why this was a financially good decision for us and why it worked out really well for us. Or was it? Or was it? Dun dun dun. <laughs> that could be very helpful to somebody who's thinking of doing a similar type project, kind of. Because everybody needs to keep in mind that all projects are different, all built projects are different, all people are different, all skill sets are different, all materials cost different things, on and on and on. But for the sake of helping somebody kind of at least know what ours was if, to figure out what theirs might be, that's something we'd be willing to do. However, just reaching into our pockets and giving, like, mm, this is our best guess of how much we spent. I don't think... It doesn't do anyone any good. Yeah, just a broad generality guess at how much the refit costs, I think actually does more harm than good because it could give people an unrealistic idea of how much something like this costs. Yeah. All of that to say, we are going to be making a video for you guys. We actually have on our to-do list to print out all of our bank statements from this year and highlight everything boat related for if our If our accountant is watching this, we're sorry. We're on it. <laughs> <laughs> I know we're a little behind schedule, but that is on our to-do list. So that way we can actually have the actual real number of how much we spent on it broken down into categories where it makes sense so that it can actually help somebody. So we'll get there. Stay tuned. It's coming. Yeah, wait, wait We're working on it. We, yeah. Should we just go get graham crackers? No. <laughs> We're like, wow. We're like 15 pounds into this. All right. <laughs> I guess we can't give up on our gingerbread house. Not yet. Maybe we should get graham crackers just in, just case. in case. Okay. I'm not super confident anymore. <laughs> based right. on Based on what this looks like right now. Oh, we need to add the molasses. Oh, that would do it. Oh, you were supposed to add the molasses and the flaxseed before you added it to the brown ingredients. What are you doing, Brett? Led me astray, Jay. I did up. exactly what you told me. Did you? You said mix these and then add them together and remove them and say. Are you sure? Are you sure? That's Rewind the tape. <laughs> that's what I said. All right. Where's the we should always have a camera running. <laughs> Shush.
Molasses. See proof, I didn't beat her. She fell all on her own. Both hands are on the pole. <laughs> We've recently had somebody harassing us because they think Brett is a gaslighter because no woman would ever want to do a boat project. So obviously <laughs> he's been gaslighting me and manipulating me into Look thinking. Look how good I am. She's saying thinking it. Thinking <laughs> that I would somehow be interested in working on a cell phone. <laughs> Heaven forbid a woman actually have dreams. All right. What was I but wait a second, I've been stirring this whole time. You're the gaslighter. You convinced me that I want to- Just get out of my kitchen. Okay, yeah, this question comes from me. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> well, the recipe calls for flax eggs. And this isn't flax seed, so it's a different- For all you normal people out there, a flax egg is a certain amount of flax seed mixed with water that you let set up for a little while and then you can put that in your baking and it does the same thing for your baking as an egg would do. So it's like a no egg, it's like an egg replacement. But this is a different kind of egg replacement and it's a different ratio. So I have to look at the original recipe, figure out how many tablespoons of flax it calls for, which means how many eggs it calls for, and then you're just basic algebra. That looks, looks just like eggs. Really lumpy ones. Oh my gosh, that looks disgusting. <laughs> oh, tapioca. Oh! Yeah, it's tapioca. It's ta tapioca. Focus on the tapioca flour. Producer, ta that makes sense why it would look like tapioca. Because it is. Yeah. Oh, it's kind of hard. Okay, this one's specific to you. Okay. Do you have RA? And also, what's RA? Um, I'm assuming RA as in rheumatoid arthritis. And the answer to that is no. But I do have an autoimmune disease that is under the same, not quite the same umbrella, but autoimmune diseases are all kind of related. So my autoimmune disease is more similar to lupus than to RA. So what I have is called UCTD which stands for undifferentiated connective tissue disease. Basically, it's an autoimmune disease of my connective tissues. I'm still kind of under an observation period with my doctors because I got diagnosed so young. And my rheumatologist thinks that it, I probably have lupus that we just caught early. So I have like baby lupus. Um, he was just hesitant to give me that diagnosis because I'm so young, he didn't want to lock me into the wrong diagnosis in case it turns into something else. So basically, it's a lot like lupus. That's the more that's a more common, I think, well-known one. So if you know anything about that, but yeah, UCTD, and then I also have something called Sjorgens, S J O R G E N, uh, and then Renauds, which is why my hands and feet are always so cool. or at least as close as what I can remember what it was like to be totally normal. And then I go through periods of where I'm really sick, which is part of why actually, why I started my own photography business. Cause like after I got diagnosed, I quickly realized I would never be able to responsibly hold a real job <laughs> because sometimes I get so sick I can't work. But being able to work for myself means I can just work extra hard when I feel good and then take extra time off when I feel bad. So what does all that mean for your future, for the channel, for sailing, all that? All that? Um, it's hard to know because some people get diagnosed and it doesn't get worse and some people get diagnosed and it gets really bad and it gets a lot worse and then you end up on chemotherapy and your kidneys die and then you need a transplant and stuff like that. So I don't know, time will tell, but it doesn't mean I'm extra motivated to just live now and do all the things I want to do and just YOLO, live your best life, all those, <laughs> all those things. Yeah. Get out there and just not procrastinate my dreams because who knows what the future holds definitely a motivator and it also means that i'll have to pace myself differently than i would have i i'm a goer i'm a doer i'm a i'm a kind of an adrenaline junkie and so i think the biggest challenge i've had has been to learn how to pace myself and to not hurt myself because 
Well, I mean, like we said earlier, I've been an athlete my whole life, and as an athlete, you learn to push yourself to your limit constantly. But now I'm in this phase of my life where if I push myself to my limit, I literally break and have serious consequences. Hey, how's that gingerbread coming along? It actually looks pretty bad. That totally has transformed. Nice kneading, babe. Well, it's gingerbread. It just needed you. You just needed it. You needed each other. <laughs> Did I have a question from our patrons, but before we jump into that. I may have made it a little too thin. We have like paper thin gingerbread. It's gonna be more like a ginger tortilla. <laughs> All right, <laughs> question. I might need to this. Okay, question. You two seem to share in everything so far and have each taken on all the tasks together. <laughs> Should I dribble these? No. So when the sailing starts, Will it be the same, or will each of you keen into something more than the other? Navigation, video editing, repairs, maintenance, cooking. Is there any thoughts on how to divvy up the workload, or as you two have done so far, a real team to the end? It's not really Brett and I's style to assign chores like you do laundry, you do dishes, you do maintenance, you take out the trash. We've never done that. It doesn't really work in a relationship like ours where Brett's gone a lot traveling. So if Brett's the only person who ever takes out the trash, I'm going to be in real trouble when he's gone. You know what I mean? So that's just not how we are. So I don't think it'll be assigned tasks, but I do think that we'll both find talent in certain areas. I think that I'm more of a planner. I could see myself doing more of like the itinerary and then Brett is very detail oriented. So I could see him being the one who makes sure that all the systems are always running and functioning. That's kind of where we complement each other. I'm more big picture. He's very detail oriented. It works really well. So I can see that. But as far as just the day to day sailboat things, I think it'll just depend on the day. I have a picture reference picture, but we chose not to make like templates or anything. So we're just having to like eyeball it, which could be fun or disastrous. I guess it depends on your outlook. Could be both. Okay, there's one piece. This oven is impressive because not only does it heat things, it'll hold a temperature. You can set it to like 350, for example, and it theoretically will stay there. <laughs> In our bus, we had an oven and it worked, but it was just like, just, you know, high, medium, low. And so you'd have to be like, well, how high is high? Is that 425 or is that 350? You don't know. And we didn't. And so it did not work very well. Ever. Ever. Uh, I mean, it worked, just not. How am I supposed to get this up? I don't, we, need a, we don't have a spatula. I mean. What was that? <laughs> Where's the fan? Right there. Oh. Beautiful. But just... Well, we're going to have to bake this in so many sessions. Uh -huh. Should I turn the heaters off? It's gonna get warm in here. It is gonna get warm in here. That needs to be, that needs to not be curved. Oh, oh that worked really well. Cow sands. Fire. What's it that Brody always says? We got fire, baby. <laughs> Thinking about making everything miniature sized. So we don't have to cook this in like 74 pieces. Did we buy two pants? Do we only have one rack in the oven? Yeah. Oh, that's a problem. Like most of us sailing aficionados, did you get your inspiration for sailing and living aboard from the likes of S.V. Delos, S.V. La Vagabond, White Spot Pirates, Expedition Red, Gone with the Winds, dot, dot, dot. You get the idea. Or was it something the two of you have always been fond of? Yes, we are proud to say, and in our first video we even said it, that we really got inspired to do this lifestyle from the Vagabond. We started watching them on like episode two or something like that, and we're just blown away that that was even an option. We have always wanted to travel. We've always wanted to kind of live alternatively and do you know this grand thing, but we had no idea, I had no idea, that you could sail the world as a young person and not retired with millions in the bank or whatever. Cause that's always kind of what I thought was that was the only way to do it. 
And so to learn that there were people doing it, it was like just planted the big old seed of you could do that. And that kind of set the whole chain of events in order that led to where we are. So yeah, we've watched the Vagabond, Delos, Uma, Nanji, White Spot Pirates, you name it. We've seen all of them. And we've been just like drinking all that in because we love it. We love all of the channels. We love it. And we're grateful for what they've done for the community and for this to make this possible. When we started this channel, we kind of set a goal that we wanted to somehow pay back to people the way that we were paid, right? That we received so much inspiration and life changing from. <laughs> <laughs> we, what right, just happened? I just choked on gingerbread. <laughs> right, our lives were changed so much for the better because of these channels that we thought, if we're doing this, we want to also be a good force in nature or in the world or whatever. And so that's what we've tried to do is that in all of our videos and everything is just be authentic, be real and help people see that they can, they can do it if they want to. And that's a lot and, of fun. And that is fun and it can be awesome. We've already had people reach out to us and thank us for what we're doing. And for us, that's just like, yes, that is why we're doing this. That's why we make the videos. That's why we spend the 80 hours putting these videos out is because we want people to see them and get inspired and say, I, I can do that or I can, whatever it is, it doesn't have to be sailing. It could be, base jumping or whatever they want to do, just they, do they can do it. I, I just handed that to you when you're covered in gingerbread. Yeah. Sorry. I think that's actually one of the most amazing things about YouTube that YouTube has to offer because it kind of just shows the world what's possible. Like Brett and I, we, we bought a school bus and built it out and lived in it and it didn't feel that weird or strange. But when we sat down and talked about it, we realized we don't know a single other person who's ever done this. This isn't like somebody that we know did it and it inspired us or sailing. Like we didn't know anybody in real life that had done this, but because of YouTube, it just kind of connects everybody and shows you what's out there and shows you what's possible in this world. And I think that's really, really, really special and really cool. <laughs> okay, new question. How much of this gingerbread are you going to eat before it's time to make gingerbread? I'm already sick, but I'm gonna, there's no eggs in it, so True. no stopping me. Okay, but really the next question is, knowing what you know now, would you buy another Benetton? I don't think I can give an honest, full answer on what I think of the boat as a whole, because I haven't sailed it yet. We haven't sailed it. We haven't done anything on this boat, really, other than fix it and now live on it. With that said, I think that question is more referring to what I know about the structure, the damage, the construction methods, everything like that. Would I buy another one? <sighs> probably. I probably would. But I think if I was buying a used, I think I, if, unless I was just staying real close to shore, I think I would reinforce the heck out of it. Uh, yeah. I, I think that's just, yeah. If I was buying a used one, I don't think I would take it out into open ocean as is, especially not if I didn't tear all the floorboards up, all the con like everything to check it all because- To basically do what we've done. Not necessarily that deep, but at least check every inch of it just because now that I know how it's built, I realize what could be hiding. Especially being in the water with the keel pulling down on the grid like it was, that damage is so minor. When it's sitting on the heart, it's obvious, but in the water, it was pretty minimal looking, so. Yeah, good look at it. Yeah. Look at your bilges, everybody. Stay safe. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on with your beanie? With my beanie? Yeah. You're hurting my <sighs> These have a very finite time frame. Oh, Ooh. man. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. Expected longer out of them. <laughs> have a look. They look like gingerbread. Well, yes. that's a good start. We don't really have a cooling rack. We don't have one at all. Ideas? Uh, we can think of something. What'd you find? I found another reason why we need such a gigantic boat. Because <laughs> we have too much crap. <laughs> we own a lot of tools. Okay, we'll downsize once all of the projects are done. It's true. Mo this entire room is tools. I think that this could work. That'll work. Or. Oh, hey, that'll cool real quick. That's not a bad idea, actually. <laughs> I'm gonna grab it out. 
much. Okay, Brett, next question. Okay. <laughs> Why do a knife? Just in case. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Different question then. <laughs> exactly. And, uh, okay. When so many of your generation are choosing not to get married, why are you too married? Because I love her. And I want her forever. And that's kind of our plan of we're together. Always. <laughs> <laughs> so, it made sense. <laughs> that works. <laughs> yeah. Easy math. Jade, why are you laying around? I'm just waiting for my turn at the cutting station. We can only fit a very small portion of our gingerbread houses in the oven at the same time. So Brett's getting his, and I'll get mine. Because home is Arizona, where our family is, because family is home. But I think if, so home in the sense of like the people you're with, I would say Arizona. But home as in like where I feel most at home as far as the land goes, would definitely be Hawaii. Okay. Like Hawaii, when I think of home, I think of my mom and Hawaii. And they're not in the same place, so it's a conflict. <laughs> And then also that is a conflict. <laughs> so the boat. <laughs> what do you say? Um, I think Arizona will always be home, as far as like where did we come from? Yeah. But home now is where us we're... here. Like yeah. it's, this is home. We're home. Yeah. This is it. The last. Set the last pan, the last dose, the last bit of gingerbread house is in the oven currently, and so we are making frosting and construction can finally begin. What do you what, what we have do one fire trigger? Okay, how long do we plan to live aboard? Till we're done. I, we don't have a plan, <laughs> yeah. We don't have an end date. Yeah. If that's, if that's the real question. Yeah. Uh, I think, I mean, a while. We got a boat big enough for kids, but I think we'll sail for a few years before kids. So. Yeah. And after kids. So. When we'll be. Right. So. There's as finite of an answer as we can give. <laughs> so basically. Well, there was another question too. It was, what's the plan after the boat? Oh, okay. That's How a good about one. That? Yeah. What's your plan after the boat, Brett? No, that's too far down the road. Brett's always talked about wanting to build a kit plane. Trent Palmer, Kit Fox, Fat Tire Cowboys. Look it up. Yep. That's what Brett wants to do. Self-sufficiency farm. Little homemade airplanes. Yeah, trap. Yep. <laughs> Big garden. I love to garden. That's definitely not something I'll be doing much of on the boat. But if you have any like potted plant on boat tips <clears throat> or resources, I'm, I need those now. <laughs> I've got to that point where I'm just thinking about potted plants. Right, Brett's filling up the frosting into our piping bag, which we only have one of, so this is going to be interesting. <laughs> Next question. Ooh. You can choose one personal item to sail around the world with. What would it be? A personal item. Can a personal item be a person? 
Who would you choose? Probably Dingo. <laughs> well, I would choose you because I. I, I don't think I'm an item. I mean, well, you're an item. True. For, I think it's like a toothbrush or. Oh, no, definitely not. Like a, toothbrush. a computer. <laughs> I don't know. A personal item. Something um, that you own. Okay, so like when you board a, board a plane, you get your carry on and you get your personal item. Right. But you can't be a purse full of things. It's one item. Oh, can't be an extra backpack. You're really struggling with this. Uh, <laughs> probably like a Kindle. So you could read? Yeah, and I mean, hopefully that comes with the charger and I'll just get like a week's worth out of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd probably go Kindle. All right, that's fair. Okay, how about you? If you had one item that you could take with you just out around the world, what would it be? Just one item. Just one. Probably a towel. Towel? Yeah. Towels have the most practical, like, magic. <laughs> okay. A towel is the most practical thing, I think, so if I had to pick one, it would be this. Because when you're sailing in the North Atlantic, you can wrap it around you as a blanket to keep you warm. If you're beach camping, you can put it up as a tent when you sleep under the stars. When you get to the beaches, the white sand beaches in the Bahamas, you can just lay it on the sand to lay down on. You can, what else can we do with it? We could use it as a sail in the untimely event that our outboard goes bad on our dinghy. Probably won't pull this boat though. If we stretch, <laughs> and then we can wave it as a distress signal, and we could wrap it around our heads for some PPE. And if after all that it's not too dirty, we can use it to dry ourselves off. Christmas music: Mariah Carey <laughs> or Bing Crosby. Mariah Carey. Okay. Favorite shape of pasta. Naki isn't pasta, right? I think it is. Just, if that counts, then that one. But I mean, what is that? Is like, that not pasta? I don't know. I think it's pasta. Is it pasta just with potatoes in it? I think it's it? just better pasta. No, I think it's pasta that's the texture of potatoes. <laughs> really? I don't know. <laughs> it's delicious. Okay, if it's like you buy it in a box at Walmart. What's your favorite shape? <laughs> Hurry, my hand's getting tired. Okay. It's time. I can't decide if it wants to focus on that or, <laughs> or you. Can you see it? What is this mean, Brett? That I'm wasting our frosting. <laughs> um, favorite favorite shape of pasta? I think the gnocchi was good. We can yeah, I like gnocchi. Okay. Yeah. okay, we're obviously competing to see who can make the best gingerbread house, but you guys are competing to see who can guess what famous houses we are making. Do you think they'll get it? Yeah. Oh, I, and do a time stamp um, of like when you figure I it out. I think they'll get yours. I don't think I did mine well enough for them to get mine. <laughs> so if you get mine, then I mean like extra Trust points you. to you. Yeah. There's like that one person that can recognize a song from the first note and they've already commented mm. on mine. I'm perfect. Well, I'm pretty sure I already missed a piece. <laughs> Okay, well, I'll just further together. What? It's a holidays. Okay, Brett, what company do you work for? We get that question a lot. I am not going to share that. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be very professional to have a YouTube subscriber show up at his work, so it's just better not to talk about it. <laughs> Yeah. It's, it's not because it's, it's hush-hush. not that it's a secret. It's yeah. not that it's hush-hush or anything. Yeah. It's just that trying to be professional. Yeah. Wow, these pieces aren't even close. Who made these? <laughs> they aren't supposed to be close because yours isn't symmetrical. Well, but I should have two pieces that are the same. Are you, are you supposed to? Because it's asymmetrical. Well, the left and right should be the same. Okay, next question. What types of dogs do you have? We have one dingo. Dingo. Hi. And one and penny. One penny. They're rescues, so we're not 
100% confident. We've never met their parents. <laughs> but an educated guess is that Penny right here is half Greyhound and half Beagle, which is why she's cute and fast. Sorry about your face. <laughs> you can go back over there. And Dingo. Dingo. Hi. Can they see him? I don't know. They've seen him before. Dingo is a Carolina dog. So. You can Google that. What? Yeah. <laughs> we didn't know they were a thing until we had one. But they're a fun breed. Yep. He's awesome. Frosting is not gluey enough. Is it not? I don't, I don't know. My pieces do not want to glue. Also gravity, but you know. And based on the house, gravity isn't really a thing. True. That's gonna throw people way off in their guesses. The truth should the amount of people who are able to guess what house it is determine who wins the competition. Like how yes. accurate we're able I to like do that. Alright, that's how it is. Okay. Rules are being made on the fly. You're allowed to comment twice. If you know what they both are, that's fine. But then we'll we have to tally up the correct answers. That's how we'll decide. How do you guys picture your retirement years? Are you kidding me? Well, me and my sisters and my mom are all going to live in a house together when we're all widows. That was my plan. That's your retirement plan? I mean, that's the only retirement plan I've ever talked about before. I mean, if you want to know, like, our Roth IRA, huh. that's a different kind of retirement plan. <laughs> I planned for that one. I don't know. It's hard to imagine a life where I, like, have gotten older and can't do all the adventurous things, but that's kind of my life right now, actually, really young. So maybe I, maybe I can. What do you want to do, Brett? I want to retirement. I mean, kind of like what we talked about when we're stopped sailing. Just have that farm. <laughs> what about when we're old and we don't want to farm? We just have children that'll do it for us? Why, yeah, why wouldn't we want to keep doing that? I think we just kind of answered that question a second ago when people were asking, what's the plan when we stop sailing? We retire. Whatever age we are, and start a homestead. I mean, that would be wonderful. We well, should probably look at our IRA investments, maybe. <laughs> what do you think we'll retire young? Not that young. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you think we'll get in the homestead and then we'll just be set for that for many years? I feel like we'll get bored with it. Well, I mean... And then we'll have to build our expedition vehicle to travel Australia. Right, but is that... I mean, I guess... But I it, guess that could just be like a trip. Well, so I guess the question is, what does it mean to retire? Because many would argue that what we're doing is retired. What does that one guy call it? Tim Ferriss? A mini retirement? Yeah. I mean, we're doing what a lot of retired people do. I guess... I'm still working and we're still YouTubing, so I guess we're still We're working. not retired at all. I know. We're still working a ton. Okay, can you guess what I'm building it? It has three walls, and none of them are perpendicular or parallel. Was that intentional? Nope. This is not a structurally sound. Okay, let's take a second to give a caveat. This is not how we built our boat. Please don't think that our gingerbread building skills is and our, our fiberglassing skills are any way similar. So I measured that fiberglass. You did. I definitely just eyed this gingerbread. Yeah, we intentionally didn't measure or. Oh yeah, maybe we should maybe we should tell them that that one of the requirements for our competition was that we weren't allowed to use a template, even a self-made one. Yep. It was all just based on... You all had, you had just eyeball it. See how well that's working out. <laughs> so far so good. I mean, yours looks like a thing. It's breaking. I intentionally picked a house to build that's supposed to be lopsided. I picked one that's not a house, so... It's a house. People live there. Probably. I think. Yeah, I was like, I mean, I don't... Maybe they don't. 
Maybe it's just like an office. Okay, second part of the question was any concerns over the dogs? Some. I think less now that we're even on the boat. Like, they're so adaptable. Yeah, our dogs are great. They're chill, they're cool with anything. Yeah, they love just, they're just happy. hanging out. So, so I don't think, no concern there. I think checking in and out of countries will be a nuisance. Not necessarily a concern, just something that I'm already kind of dreading, not looking forward to at all. <gasps> not the hell. No! What happened, Emmy? It just didn't, like, stick at all. I think the frosting's, like, getting old. Maybe we need to, like, stir it. I think the frosting isn't sticky enough. It's really sticky as long as it doesn't crust. As soon as it crusts. <sighs> Any other concerns? Um, concerns? I mean, there's some little one, like, Dingo really doesn't like going to the bathroom on the leash. <laughs> there's so, also dog hair management. Dog hair management is a big one that we're already having to learn how to deal with. Shout out to Dyson. Freaking but, awesome vacuum. No sponsorship, just awesome vacuum. <laughs> uh, I think I might... No! We gotta persevere, babe. <laughs> the frosting just didn't work, babe. Can you say that most line? Yeah. What just happened out of your mouth? Okay, this one's kind of what we answered before with like most desired destination, but he specifies by region. So oh. what is your most desired sailing destination? Caribbean, Central America, Pacific, Asia, Med. And any specific specific locations you'd like to get to and explore. Ooh. You have some of those. Well, yeah. More so than me. Well, I think I'm more excited for the South Pacific. Yeah. Of the whole world. I think the Met will be cool, but that's because art and museums and stuff, but less like the sailing side of things. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not super, like, amped to go to the Met. We'll just have to make this. What about you? <laughs> well, so I kind of answered answer that partially with Great Barrier Reef. Okay, Australia. Yeah, Australia, New Zealand. I think we'll spend quite a lot of time there. Yeah. So that is going back to the dogs. That's actually one concern with the dogs is that the dogs won't be able to sail with us for the South Pacific parts of it because you just really can't take dogs there. Yeah. Mostly French Polynesia, Tahiti, but we do want to sell those areas. So during that time, our plan at the moment is that the dogs will stay with my mom. I got you, babe. They're just not staying. For, just not. for the few months that we're getting through that area, and then we'll probably import them into Australia and stay in Australia for a while. Or New Zealand. Or, or New Zealand. Usually once you're in one or the other, it's easier with dogs. Like if, because rabies. Burberry for me, Australia, New Zealand. Uh, I'm just gonna go sail in Hawaii again. Yeah. I'm honestly, I'm excited for the. I want to spend some more time on Kauai. And the Bahamas, like, just seeing all the pictures and the videos and everything. The Bahamas, like, I feel like it's kind of cheap to say the Bahamas because it's just like. Because everybody else's favorite too. Yeah. But it's everybody's favorite for a reason. Right. Generally, tourist spots are tourist spots because they're cool. Well, I think just among sailors, the Bahamas was a really good yeah. place. And also, that's the most forefront in our mind, because that's where we're trying to get to next. So, we spent a lot of time daydreaming about it. What is the grid glued down to the hole prior to you fiberglassing it in place? Are you getting professional guidance on the steps you've taken? Good luck, love your spirit, and determination. Uh, so this is more of a get to know us video, but I'll answer this one really briefly. It was glued down, but not in the same sense that it was glued down originally from the factory because those were tabs that were glued down and we did put a glue, a 602 or I think an epoxy under the, the parts of the grid before we fiberglass it down, but just not the same way. Um, so kind of. Right. And if you think about it, it's because of the walls of the grid were only a few layers of fiberglass thick. So the surface area and the, the 
important thing to remember is that our grid is hollow. So the surface area right. that we were gluing down was only... Yeah, quarter inch thick in a lot of places. No, not even that. Yeah, depending like eight, maximum. Maybe so yeah, having inch. having that glued down really wasn't doing much. Way for smaller. Us. Yeah, it was only like it was only a few layers of fiberglass thick in some places. Yeah. So. so that's that. Did we have professional help, or have we had professional help along the way? Yes. So. Well, sort of. We didn't have a lot of professional help, but we did have a lot of professional guidance, which is what he asked. Oh yes, yeah. So. We didn't, we didn't have any people helping us like hands on, but we did have people giving. Us helpful yeah, advice. Kind of, exactly, yeah. From the very beginning, before we, before Brett even went and looked at the boat, I had people on the phone all over the country, like, learning more about the construction, mm -hmm. and yeah, we, we've had guidance along the entire way. I think a lot of people get confused because we didn't film, We didn't show that? We didn't film yeah. the professionals that we talked to, uh, so they, you know, if it's not, how do I say this? So a lot of people think if they didn't, if we didn't show it, it didn't happen. Yeah, a lot but, of people have been concerned because we never filmed yeah. the professionals but that's because i mean it's our story <laughs> well it's our story but also i i don't feel comfortable filming people and being like hey i'm gonna film you and put you on the internet and most people yeah. aren't super fond of that either so just for their own with privacy. few exceptions like dave <laughs> yeah dave dave doesn't get any courtesy <laughs> so the yeah no the a lot of the professionals that we spoke to we really wanted to protect their privacy and not just throw their faces up on the internet. So we didn't film them when they came. I don't think we filmed our surveyor a single time. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that's just because people on the internet can be really rotten and we wanted to protect them. You know, we get a lot of hate and... Not a lot of it. We get some hate. We get and some we didn't, hate. And we didn't want to pass that on to anyone else. Especially not somebody who's working in a professional sense and, and are and very us. highly competent. Yeah. The people that usually give hate are the people who don't know what they're talking about. So we just didn't want to... Yeah, that. Favorite dessert? Oh. Mine's definitely creme brulee. I have like a specific diet I'm supposed to be on, but I will always make an exception for creme brulee. <laughs> What's yours? Dark chocolate? I don't know. Like if I had to have like, like if there, there was a dessert menu and I had every dessert on there, which would I pick? I think I would just not get a dessert. That would be really overwhelming. I know. No, I get kind of... Maybe, like, a really good cheesecake? I do, I do like Remember cheesecake. Remember that time you ate pretty much the entire cheesecake my mom made? Yeah. <laughs> like that. Yep. Or pumpkin pie. I love pumpkin pie. But that one, like, I, think I do the, like the I year-round. I think round. the cheesecake my mom made you was a pumpkin pie cheesecake, wasn't it? I don't know. <laughs> I believe it, though. <laughs> if so, then that's definitely why I ate the whole thing. Yeah. Pumpkin so pumpkin pie cheesecake thing. Yeah. Okay. Okay, can you guys tell what I'm building yet? <laughs> I'm done. What is that piece? If this is the piece that I can make whatever I want out of it. Yeah. In case I need a good pieces. Idea. I have just like a blank canvas. Well, those are, don't I've, I've given up on mine. Have you? Yeah. I've, I've... <laughs> what's the word? Not seceded. Is that the right Conceded? Conceded? I bowed out. Of, you are of, conceded? Yeah, I, I'm conceded. I've given up. I will show you what I was going to build. No, you should make him guess. Can, do you want me to help you just hold the pieces in place so I can see what it was supposed to look like? Sure. Oh no, mine's falling. Wait. Wait one second. I'm, I'm busy. I need to camp for an appointment. Okay, just picture, picture this. And then picture some like tracks down here, and picture that this house moves. Okay, so that's their hints for yours. Yeah. All right, here's mine. There's like another little house. Oh, are you giving up too? Down here. Do you see what's happening? Okay, this is my house. My hint for you is red hair. Red hair. Maybe we should just save all of our pieces and do it with better cost. Do you want it? Well, no, I I'm not. I'm bad. I think that this was a good college try. Okay, next question. Jade, you have a degree in painting, but we've never seen you paint. <laughs> Are you planning to pursue that as a career or was it just a hobby? 
<laughs> so I... Yo, what the heck? I do plan on having Paint TV my main career in life. I am actually working on a really cool gallery concept series of 12 different paintings in the background and it is a secret because I've got to keep my concept to myself because it's pretty cool. Uh, so you probably won't see me paint for <laughs> at least a year because I, until I'm done with all of the paintings then we'll we'll do like a grand reveal. It's a, it's a very unique never been done before idea. And I'm really pumped and passionate about it, but I want to keep it to myself yep. until it's all done and I'm set up with the gallery and proprietary. <laughs> Pro -pro 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 <laughs> so I do paint in the background. I put everything on pause for the rebuild, but now that it's done, I can finally open up my sketchbook because it's just pages and pages of just drafts. So I can finally put them on canvas. That would be pretty cool. That would be awesome. Um, I could show you guys sketches or something. <laughs> if you guys want to see my artwork, I could pull something out. Um, I have a picture of Penny in there that I drew the other day. It's unfinished. Oh, I thought I finished it before. I don't know if that's going to focus. That's the only artwork I've done in 2020 that I can show anybody at this moment. <laughs> it's, it's kind not, of sad. And it's not finished. Well, I just don't want anybody to see it until it's no, like, all the way done. I'm not arguing Some people are all about like work in progress shots, and I'm taking all of those, but I'm going to put them out in the world later. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned. Thanks for your patience. <laughs> oh, yeah, this one goes with that one. Are you still planning to go to art school in Europe? I have, I'm no longer planning to. But I would still like to at some point. Uh, may, I don't know when that would fit in though. So I, I'm thinking at this point I'm already headlong into my career path as far as this series goes. But maybe once I'm done with this set of painting, I like the idea of going back to school to learn more about sculpting. But for the boat life period, I'm going to focus on the painting side of my studio artworks, if that makes sense. So right now, no, but later, I think I might give them a call and be like, hey, am I still accepted? <laughs> can I come? Can I still come? Can in? I come to your sculpture program? Uh, so we'll, we'll see. Maybe later. How is your hair so much better than mine? Who says oh, someone, that? No, someone asking me that. How is your hair better? Mm-hmm. Vitamins. I think you just have good hair genes. Who said that? Was it one of your brothers? No, it was one of my old school friends. I thought Rand was your cousin. Mm-mm. She an ex girlfriend? No. Which I don't one? think so. Were we? No. <laughs> <laughs> How many calories do you try to burn in a workout each day? Uh, wow, that's some big assumptions there. <laughs> that we work out each day. <laughs> or that we count calories. Yeah. As we're sitting here just like munching on gingerbread and I'm <laughs> dipping mine in frosting. I. <laughs> workout type. We are the live a really active lifestyle and therefore be fit yeah. type. So I keep trying to be a gym person. I just don't like going to the gym. We're more like let's rock climb and hike rather yeah. than let's lift weights. There's nothing wrong with that. That's no, just I, like who we are. Yeah. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah, uh, enough. <laughs> who was your favorite sprint coworker? Mm, definitely DJ. Is that who did it? No. <laughs> All right. Why are you wearing the hat your amazing sister made you? I didn't want to get frosting on it. I could go get it. But you'd probably get frosting on it. Is it machine washable? Yeah, can I get some care instructions on that hat, by the way? It didn't come with like a tag, hot, yeah. cold wash. Do you know if it's fair trade? She bought the recycled labor? yarn. Is it slave labor? <laughs> Are you enslaved? <laughs> oh. Why do you think alternative living is the way to go? Uh, I would answer that with, I don't think it is the way to go. I think it is a way to go. Yeah, yeah, a lot of... 
digital nomad type traveling. Millennials, even. Well, not yeah. like the traveler, the yeah, travel yeah. ones, the ones you see on YouTube. I feel like it's a common theme to kind of just trash the nine to five and <laughs> make the nine to five out to be like the worst thing in the world. Yeah. But there's nothing wrong with that. Like if that's what you like and that's what's making you happy and you enjoy doing it, then that's the way for you. Yeah. For us, that wasn't. But if we like, had, I think we would be just as happy. Yeah, we we would be happy with whatever we decided to do. Yeah. Because. Well, because. Um, yeah, we've we've done alternative. We also done pretty normal living in an apartment. And both are great for different. Yeah. Reasons, so. so yeah. We, yeah. To answer your question, no. <laughs> but. Oh, is it the way? No, it's it, definitely it, it's, it's definitely way. a good it was, way. Why do we think it's? And the I way. I so. With that said, I love the alternative lifestyle, especially the like off-grid, self-sufficiently, self-contained oh, sure. side of it. I love it. And I really got that bug as we started building the bus and realizing that if we built it right, we wouldn't have to really go to the store or plug into a grid or anything. We could catch water, we could store water, we could purify it, we could have our own solar, we could have batteries, we could whatever. And for the most part, and I realize that yet you can go down rabbit holes, for the most part, we were self-sustaining. Yeah, and that was a really cool experience. And it was awesome. It was so fun, and I loved monitoring the systems and seeing how things were doing, and oh, it's been a cloudy day. And, I, and so I think it, it's been a really fun thing, and that's also part of what I look forward to most with the boat, and right. already am, of, okay, the tanks are full. How long are the tanks going to last before they're empty? And how much you know, amperage are we pulling? Mm -hmm. And okay, well, that circuit breaker can only do 10 amps. And so, yeah. All the things. <laughs> and on the other side of that, being that way really forces you to be connected with nature. And I think that, at least us, we're way oh, yeah. happier, significantly happier when we're able to be connected with nature on a regular basis. We could totally connect with nature living in the suburbs. There's always hikes and activities. Which we did. Weekend trips. Like, yep. like being a weekender. I mean... I, we're weekenders. We still work all yeah, weekend. Really. Well, I anyway. So we're happy. Yep. You can answer it. We'll finish it. Let me see. There. These are good. No, I think they're great. Do you need to go potty? Oh, Woeness. Apparently, she Woeness does munchkin. Too. Okay. <laughs> what was that? We're gonna finish the vlog here because we need to take the dogs out. So, any last questions to answer? Why are we doing this? I think that it got that actually got asked in multiple different ways, multiple different contexts. Yeah, like, like what is your why? Yeah, well, yeah, and what's and your motivation? Why, yeah, why? Why choose a damn? Yeah, yeah. Why, all that. Why? All the whys. Why for you, Brett? Because we want to, and we can, and now's the time. Like it, it just made like this is a dream that we've had. And we were able to make it we happen. We were able to make it happen. We made it happen. It isn't like it accidentally happened. We made it happen. Yeah, things like this don't accidentally happen. If yeah. this accidentally happens to you, like, give us a call because you that, that yeah. would be something. And it fit with the timeline. It fit with the the business moving forward. It fit with, it just fit. Yeah. And so, why not? That's a better question. Why not? Yeah. Pass it back to you. Why not? People have all kinds of reasons. I know. Like, because you could die. Hot showers. <laughs> yeah. Dog hair. That's going to happen in our suburban house, too. What You're a good girl. <laughs> Go on and do nothing. You know the one that you ate? Yeah. She ate it first. No. Really? You had already eaten it, though, before I could say anything. And I was like, well, I hope she took the dog hair off at first. Did you? Uh, you say it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's all we got. Sorry, we. Sorry, no, we let you down. Don't apologize. We did a great job, and if you guys are unable to guess what we built, then that's on you. Like it was pretty obvious. I mean, my color was correct. No, yours is supposed to be silver. No, it's not. Okay, mine is kind of brownish too. Okay, well, there's another clue for you. Brownish. Anyways, thanks guys for watching. Comment uh, below. Yeah. What comment did, your question. What did we build? What did we build? Uh, if you have more questions, you can put them in the comments. We have no plans on making another how to, or uh, how to well, another that's a Q and A. But if you guys but, particularly enjoyed this, yeah, we can do another we one later. Do another we one. can make this a semi annual thing. We could thing do it. When we, a, we should make it a holiday thing. We'll do it when we die Easter eggs. That would be fun. Should we do that? Yeah. We should do that. Okay, we'll do that. Okay. 
Whatever the next holiday is. So start thinking. New Year's? All right, we'll see you <laughs> next week. Oh, man. Maybe, right. we'll, maybe we'll do, like, a boat Q&A next. Yes. Or something. Well, what kind of videos, what kind of Q&A videos do you want to see? Do you want any dedicated videos, such as, well, obviously, the ha what we spent. We're going to make that one. And if you guys wanted the actual timeline video, we could do one like that. Well, any other ideas? That's very cute, Penny. <laughs> Yeah, we could do a timeline. Yeah, anyways. We could make a video like, what would we do differently? Yeah. Yeah, what would we That's do different? What, what do we do right? What do we do wrong? But we'll wait till all the videos are out so it yeah. all has context to yeah. make sense. Well, and we don't know yet. <laughs> we don't know all those yet. Because <laughs> we gotta get the best stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's gone so oh, wrong. Gosh. Okay. Oh, Alright. If you've made it this far, thanks. Yeah, this might be like three hours in. It's two days in for us. Yeah. So, so subscribe. Hope you up. Obviously, yeah. we're not so bad. Uh, yep. Yeah, so, so, so uh, sorry, I just elbowed you in the face. So, if you aren't already subscribed, subscribe. We like seeing the subscriber count go up. It makes us happy, and it really does help us a ton. Yeah. Uh, what, what else? We interrupted our regular programming, so yeah. Next the, next week will be what you thought the, was going to be this yeah, week, which prepping is prepping the bottom. Yeah, prepping the inside of the hole. But, Merry Christmas. Yeah. Um, We're releasing really on Christmas, right? Yeah. Yeah. Merry Christmas if you celebrate Christmas. If you don't celebrate Christmas, happy December 25th. And we'll see you next week. <laughs>